بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم And it's important that we understand for any act of worship that which we do for it to be accepted by Allah it has to meet two conditions and these conditions the first one is sincerity and the second one is being in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet so every act of worship is known as something called tawqifiyya which is that we do not know how to worship Allah except through revelation except through the Quran and through the sunnah of the Prophet so we cannot just pick and choose how to get to Allah but rather we get to Allah and we please Him by the acts of worship that we do by that which He has revealed through the Quran and the Sunnah and there are many wisdoms to this the first and probably most important wisdom with regards to this is because it causes unity and it destroys disunity so for an example if you found 10 people and you ask them, how do you think we should worship Allah? Every single person based upon his culture and his life experiences is going to come in a different way. So if you were to go to 10 people and ask them, how do you think we should get closer to Allah? They're all going to give you different answers based on their own cultures and their own life experiences. But rather we worship Allah based upon how he wants us to worship him. So this causes unity. You'll find no division, no fractions. So it's important we understand that every single act of worship that we do has to meet these two conditions. It has to be done sincerely for the sake of Allah and it has to be done in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet If any of these two conditions is missing, then that act of worship is rejected. And once these two conditions are met, then that act of worship is accepted. Allah says, and the proofs of these two conditions where Allah says, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ أَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Allah says, and whomsoever desires to meet his Lord, then let him do a righteous deed, and let him not make any partners with Allah in any single way. So the righteous deed, of course, is that which the Prophet ﷺ came and taught us, and the proofs of these two conditions. Is that Allah says, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ أَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا And whosoever wishes to meet his Lord, then let him do a righteous deed and let him not commit shirk with Allah in any way. The righteous deed talking about the second condition in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. For surely what is more righteous than the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? And the, and the first condition is understood from the last bit of the ayah. Allah says, وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا They do not let him commit shirk in any way. So that first condition is sincerity. This, this deed has to be done for Allah and Allah alone. Without any partners. Without seeking any partners or seeking any worldly reward for that deed. Or doing it to be praised and showing off. As Allah says, فَعْبُدِ اللَّهَ مُقْلِسِينَ لَعُدِّينَ And worship Allah sincerely. And as Allah says in the Hadith Al-Qudsi, مَنْ أَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَشْرَكَ مَا إِيَا فِيهِ غَيْرِي تَرَقْتُهُ وَشِرْكَهُ The whosoever does a deed and he makes shirk in that deed he shares it out so he does the deed for the sake of Allah but at the same time he does it to be seen or to be heard and for the praise of the people then Allah says I leave him and this deed and the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith which you've all memorized إِنَّ مَا لَأْمَانُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّ مَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى that surely every uh, every deed is judged by the intention of that deed and every man shall have that which he intended this is the first condition and surely Allah knows best 